Good day, family. I hope you guys are having a great one. Well, 2023 is just about done, and so is our promo over at Sometree.com. Make sure you check it out because after that, up to 50% off of just about everything in the store. Can you believe it? Well, anyway, make sure you head over to Sometree.com, but that's not why I'm here. I want to share with you this wonderful video that I came across. There's actually two videos from um, um, Judge Lynn Toyer. She's of um, divorce court, and she's telling a wonderful story about the love she had for her husband and the lessons that she learned. I tell you, what a great way to end one year and to enter into a new year by reflecting on mistakes that we've made so that we can become a better version of ourselves. Let's check it this is an homage to my hype man, my butt full brother. But for Eric, you wouldn't know me. I remember when I was running for judge, I was 30 years old. No, I wasn't. I was 33 years old. And one of the guys that I was running against had been a lawyer in that community for 12 years longer than I had been alive. And... Um, I had absolutely no business winning that race, but I did, and I won that race because my husband pushed me, and he pushed me, and he pushed me, and he pushed me so much that we were not speaking by the end of the campaign. One particular argument we had, uh, I said, hey, there were a number of people in the race. And that, that guy told you that had been there that long, I really liked him. He was a good dude. And I said, well, if I, one day, I don't know what I was thinking. I said, well, if I don't win, I sure hope Russ Barron does. My husband turned around to me and said, I have never in my life gotten into a race with the intention of coming in second. And if that's what you're looking to do, you need to find a new campaign manager. Every night, he said, one more house, one more house, one more house. We fought and we fought until Election Day. And I won by six votes. Every vote counted. But for my husband... But for the fact he made me madly uncomfortable, but for the fact that I understood what we were doing and even though I didn't want to do it, I, I finally did because I knew he, somewhere deep inside he was right. But for all of that, none of this would have happened. The moral of the story is this. Well... This isn't the moral of the story, but this is how the story turned out. I always try to do something worthwhile, but I just want to say, oh, okay, I got a moral now. Sometimes I have to catch up with myself. When I did my speech, when I got my robe, one of the first things I said was, I turned and I looked at him and I said, I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to you publicly for all the horrible things I said to you and the worst things I said about you to my mother. Got a big laugh, but it was also me acknowledging that he was right, I was wrong, and I appreciated the push, even though I didn't feel it in the moment. You got to acknowledge those who do for you, especially when those who do for you have to put up with you. With a you that is not the best you, you can be at all times. Whether that made any sense, I do not know. But I'm tired. And I miss my butt for a brother. I got all into this because I was going to ask you guys to press me to finish my books. So if you would, I'd appreciate it, because you're going to be my butt for community. All right? Please. I haven't been able to watch this in a long time because it foreshadowed the great goodbye, but this video is the best of us. We always had a good time. He thought I was silly, and he was my safe room. And 
Now that I can see this, it's more joy than pain. This is good.